Yes, I'm ready. Sorry about that. Yes. Which one? Binomials or trinomials? Yes. 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 Correct. However, when we get to um, so so when we talk about factoring, we talk about using integers. So if I have the uh, the uh, sum of uh, two uh, product, two perfect squares, I can factor it, but it will be x minus two i and x plus two i. But this is not what we really want. When we talk about factoring, we really want to use integers, and these are not integers. Two i is an is an um, a complex number, and plus two i and minus two i. They're complex numbers. So we can. So under certain circumstances, we will be able to use this. We will also be able to use uh, factoring on, let's say, um, x squared uh, minus 2. But it's not going to be integers. It will be x plus the square root of 2 and x minus the square root of 2. But at this stage in algebra, in our course, we really want to use integers. So for now, we're going to say uh, a squared plus b squared is not factored with, remember I said comma, to be exact, using integers. So it is factorable, but not using integers. Very good question. Very good. Anything else? Question. Yes? Factor, Does it make sense? Is this clear? Yes, it makes sense. Perfect. But basically, there's a, there's a very good proof on YouTube about that particular problem. And what they do is that they'll take that x squared plus 4, yes. and they'll turn it into x squared minus minus 4. Right. One, right. 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 There is a problem with that. So the correct. Um, so how did we? Uh, how did mathematicians come up with the um, complex numbers? So when they are trying to solve the equation x squared equal plus four, or even the simplest one is this. So they said, okay, uh, this is a positive number. I'm adding one to it. There is no way I can have zero when I add a positive number to 1. Yes, Maureen, go ahead. Joy, any questions? OK, so um, then they said, OK, let's see what happens if we move 1 to the other side. And then they said, oh, oops, we're getting into another problem now, because when I try to take the square root like we normally do, I will still get plus or minus. But what is this? What is the square of negative 1? And they said, oops, we cannot take the square from negative 1 because it's a, not a real number. And then they change it into the, negative, the square of negative 1 times the square of 1. So this will become i and this will become 1. So that's how they came up with this. So, and that's how the square root of negative 4 becomes the square of negative 1 times the square of 4, which will become i and 2 times, times 2, or 2i. Two yeah, so um, it's a very good question. We don't need to do this right this moment. It's, but I wanted to answer your questions. I always answer questions. Anything else? Maureen, have you tried anything? Jasmine, have you tried anything? You're talking about this? Yeah. Have you encountered this in my math lab? I've encountered it. Okay, but not not in this course just yet. Okay, perfect. So this is the correct step. Can you omit this step and go ahead and write two i? Yes, yes. But we were talking about what Bob saw on the internet, and I was trying to explain where those come from. But yes, you can write the square of negative four as two i, not plus or minus two i. Be very careful. Is that clear? This is not plus or minus. Plus or minus come from the other side. OK? So the square root of negative 4 is only 2i, not plus or minus 2i. But if I want to solve the equation x squared plus 4 equals 0, and I write x squared equals negative 4, when I take the square root, the plus or minus come from this side, not from this side. This is only 2i. So my second question is, when we're factoring by grouping, yes. in order to get the right pairings, so yes. Like, yes. Uh, is it true uh, that the ratio between the coefficients should be the same? 
the coefficient of the first term and the second term? And the third and the fourth. Um, yes, I, I would say yes, but I have to look at the... Uh, right, uh, it's because otherwise I will not have the common factor in both pairs. I would have to say yes. Yeah. Very good. Other questions? Other questions? So how are we doing so far with um, with the homework, with the topics? Any the, questions for me? The homework frustrates me a little bit because a lot of it is repetitive. Right. So do we have to finish like all 28 examples for the beginning? Oh, well, if you find that uh, 10 problems are the same, do five of them. So I'm, I'm okay with that. The question is, um, if a student does not have your strong, already clearly to me, strong math background, if the, that student uh, out of 10 does only 5, that may not be enough for that student. So a little bit of plus or minus fluctuation in homework grade is not going to affect your grade. The two tests and the final exam are the biggest chunk. So. So for everyone, um, I know it's time consuming. I have no question. OK, so we're back to, before we look at complex rational expressions, I need some, uh, some work. I can't just jump to complex rational expressions. OK, so forget about the book for a moment. So let's take a look at a few examples. So I'm going to go back to what we studied or started, I would say, last time about rational expressions. Okay, so let's take a look at another example. Here's another example of a rational expression. x plus 1 over x squared minus 4. Yes, it is a rational expression because the top and bottom have x, but especially the denominator. This is also a rational expression. It doesn't have x in the numerator, but that's okay. But it cannot, it has to have x in the denominator for it to be a, considered a rational expression. This is not considered a rational expression. And you can say, but it has a fraction. True. But it's a ratio of two polynomials, two and three. Yes, there are also polynomials. However, this is not a rational expression. This is only a numerical rational or numerical expression, rational expression. This one. If it doesn't have x in the denominator, it's not a rational expression. OK, so let's suppose we have here two questions. Question number one. What x values make the expression undefined? And question number two, domain. Write the domain after you find which x values create a situation that is undefined. Okay. How do I start? What do I have to write? When is a rational expression undefined? And I want to add one more quick question. Yes, Maureen, uh, allow me to write one more question. Um, what x value or values make this expression Zero, equal to zero. OK. Yes, Maureen, forgive me. Yes, please. You wanted to say something. Yes. You're keeping me on the edge. Say it again. If? No. 
rational expression is, is undefined when the so the answer to number one a rational expression is undefined when thank you very much in this case when the denominator equals zero because we know we wrote sometime last week that division by zero is we cannot forget this division by zero zero is exactly so all I have to do now is solve this equation x squared minus 4 equals 0 and we know how it's a polynomial it's a, a binomial descending order greatest common factor no negative leading coefficient no special product how do I factor this very good awesome indeed x plus 2, x minus 2, and by the zero product principle, we know, please do not forget to redo the problems we do in class. That's your first layer of understanding. So we get x equals and x equals. Very good. So then we will say that this expression, x plus 1 over x squared minus 4, is undefined. When, when what? That is the sentence that we have to write. So this expression is undefined when x is plus or minus 2. Perfect. Now, the second question is asking us to find the domain. Can anyone give us the domain of this expression? So number 2 is domain. Yes? Ready? Very good. Negative infinity. Perfect. Say it again. Careful. We can only exclude this. We are not allowed to exclude anything else. We already stated that this expression is undefined at 2 and negative 2. I cannot exclude 4 and 3 and negative 1 and 0 and 400. I have to exclude what I know that makes the expression undefined. I can't. I'm not allowed to exclude anything else. So I kind of picture a number line that you're walking up. From left to right, indeed. Very good. Union. Nope. I have to start at negative 2. Comma. Comma. Good. Union. Two to infinity. Yes. Absolutely. We did that last time. So I am kindly asking you to redo the problems we did in class as the first layer of understanding. If you want to build knowledge in this class and move forward with a big package of information. So please remember, this is the way we have to write uh, the domain. Awesome. Okay, part three. What x values make this expression zero? When is a fraction zero? Well, the question, uh, the next question is part three. What x values make this expression zero? When is a fraction zero? Absolutely. A fraction is zero only when the numerator is zero. Because if the denominator is zero, the fraction is excellent. Very good. So number three, x plus one over x squared minus four is zero only when x plus one is zero, which is the numerator, which means x equals negative one. Great job. So a fraction is zero only when the numerator is zero, and a fraction is undefined only when the denominator is zero. Awesome. Okay, I just want to review with you um, multiplying, dividing, 
adding and subtracting rational expressions, and then we can indeed um, uh, then we can indeed uh, look at these uh, complex. I have to review with you before I jump into this. Okay, complex um, simplifying complex fractions. Okay, so now let's see how we uh, multiply and divide rational expressions. So let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, let's say um, 2x plus 1 over x minus 2 uh, multiplied by uh, 2x minus 4 divided by x minus 1. Uh, first, each fraction, um, when it has x in the denominator, will have a restriction. What is the restriction for this fraction to exist? For this rational expression to exist, obviously x cannot be no, because zero minus two is negative two, and I'm allowed to divide by negative two. Oh, Excellent, because two minus two is zero, and I'm not allowed to divide by zero. I mean, I'm allowed to, but I can't get anything. Excellent. So, what is the restriction for the second fraction? Excellent. So, keeping in mind that these are the two restrictions. Then I see that 2x plus 1 is completely factored. I see that x minus 2 is completely factored. I see that x minus 1 is completely factored, but maybe I can do something to 2x minus 2. So I'm copying the whole thing. And let's look at 2x minus 4. Is there anything I can do to it? It's a binomial. It's in, the, in descending order. Fine, no negative reading coefficient, but does it have a common factor? Do those two terms at the top have a common factor? And the answer is two out. excellent. So when I factor two out, what is left in parentheses? Very good. Before I multiply, I always try to simplify if possible. Is there any common factor that goes away here? And the answer is yes, please, Maureen, go ahead. Very good, indeed. We only simplify factors. We wrote that last time. We only simplify factors. Only x minus two go. The two factors go away. So now the simplified form, and you are not supposed to distribute, is this. So this is a simplified form of the product of the two rational expressions. I'm sure you did this in the previous course, correct? Do you remember any of this? Yeah. Perfect. Now, the correct answer, careful, the correct answer is not this. The correct answer is this. I don't care what they said to you in the previous okay. class. The product is not 2 times 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. It is 2 times 2x plus 1 over x minus 1 only if not, not exactly. Because if x is 1 or 2, this doesn't exist. So the correct answer is this, assuming that x is never 1 or 2. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. The expression is gone. Do you understand my point? Excellent. Okay, let's look at a review of division. So let's say we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 over x minus 2 divided by uh, 3x minus 6 over x, x plus 1 at the top and 3x minus 6 in the denominator. So now this is a division of two rational expressions. Would you agree? Yes. They both have x in the denominator. So these are not numerical expressions, but they are rational expressions. Perfect. OK. So the first expression, in order to exist, I can't touch anything. I cannot flip. I cannot do anything before I state the restrictions. So for the first one, what is the restriction of existence? What is the condition for this expression to exist? Excellent. Perfect. What is the condition for this? 
good. So I don't have to write it a second time. It's good enough. Once is good enough because it's the same. Good. So now I copy the first expression, but I would like to be able to factor this. Can anyone work on x squared minus 2x plus 1? It's a trinomial that's in descending order. No greatest common factor, no negative leading coefficient. Special product, I always hope for a special product. If the first term and the last term are perfect squares, there is hope. Is the first term a perfect square? Yes. Is the last term a perfect square? Yeah. What would you expect to write? Squared, what? What in parentheses? Squared. X plus, X plus one, not X plus one squared. Careful. No, X plus one squared. X minus one squared. Excellent. Well done. So I expect X minus one squared, but I haven't checked the middle term. What is the middle term here? When I expand this, I get three terms. We agreed on that. Two times the first times the second. Two times the first times the second. What will that be? Good. Is that there? So that's the correct form. We need to check. Because remember, we have not looked at this term when we analyzed the first and the last, and we said, oh, I think it's x minus 1 squared. If you don't check the middle term, you may be on the right, wrong track. Okay, so we copy the denominator, which is x minus 2. Now I have to flip this, and I write, let's factor 3x minus 6. How do I factor? 3x minus 6. The division changes into a product. I need to factor 3x minus 6. Very good. Awesome. Now the denominator becomes x plus 1. This is a new denominator with a new restriction. I already did. So a new denominator with a new restriction. What is the restriction on this new denominator? Awesome. Only now I'm cleared to simplify. Is there any common factor? Are there common factors that I could get rid of? Please. Okay, can anyone tell us why do we flip when we divide two fractions? Yes, I mean, that's, that's the rule. That's so when we divide two fractions, we copy the fraction from the top and we multiply it by the multiplicative inverse of the second one. Is that okay? We remember that now? Awesome. Common factors that, that go away, yes or no? Yes. Good. Can you name any? One, yes, only x minus 2. And the simplified form is 3, x minus 1 squared over x plus 1. The correct answer of the simplified form of this division is this. This is the correct answer. The division of these two rational expressions is blah, 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 only if x is not 1 and x is not 2. If x is 1 or 2, nothing exists. It's poof, up in the air. Okay? Please. If on the right side, the x, one, x plus 1 on the, on the denominator. Yes. If, if it has been minus x plus 1. Yes. The background of minus 1. Yes. Yes. So if if the scenario is this negative x plus one, I would have written this, of course, with the uh, appropriate restriction because now it's still the same. Yeah, it's still x. Uh, yes. So negative x minus one, and then I would have crossed out one from the top with one from the denominator. I would write one, so you don't think it's zero. So positive three over negative one is negative three, and the answer would have been this and nothing else. Of course, with the restrictions. Yes, together with the restrictions. Do you understand the, how important the restrictions are? Okay, ex excellent. Good, so let's review how we add and subtract rational expressions. Have we done that before in the past, in the previous class? Adding and subtracting. I'm sure, because we the next step is solving rational equations, yeah. Okay, let me give you a couple of examples. Uh, let me see if I have a few here. 